funny, funny thing to note, we're going to have to run that in the hardware store. <laughs> so, uh, sewer fittings are not the same outside diameter as ABS pipe. So this is 3 inch ABS. This is a 3 to 4 inch PVC fitting. This 3 inch fitting doesn't fit on that 3 inch pipe because the outside diameters are different. So we're going to run down to the hardware store and rebuy all these fittings and rebuild this whole assembly. And it's going to be super fun. That's really what happens when you actually do plumbing because you have to go to the hardware store like five times. So this is video number two of the septic system install. We're going to cover tank riser install and a little bit more plumbing. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so we ran down to the hardware store and we got the right fitting. Uh, slightly different adapter, still three inch, and they're sitting right next to each other and they look very similar when you look at them on the shelf. This actually fixed the uh, ABS. Instead of a PVC white three inch adapter, it's actually an ABS adapter. So you can see here, this pipe is our gutter drain pipe and we kicked it out. And we talk about kicking this out in the video that we installed this pipe on, so you can go check that video out. Um, these are things to consider when you're doing your foundation work, where your exit for your pipe, for your water is going to come out. So we put it in this corner so we would be able to come out of the house and kick underneath of this pipe. Um, sometimes if your foundation wall is high enough, you can put the exit for this pipe up higher on the wall. But in his case, his vents are high and the backfill and dirt's going to come up here. So we really didn't have that option here. So we just 45 underneath of it and then we're going to tie it into the tanks and we'll be good to go. So right now you see we have one of the green risers. These are actually just, uh, I don't know, what is this, 30 inch pipe. Um, we, we talk about them as risers in relation to septic tanks, but they're, it's actually just pipe uh, with uh, ribs on it. So we have four two foot high risers. Uh, the we got two feet because we wanted to make sure they were all the right height and since you pay by the foot for this stuff and it's pretty expensive. And we're turning the laser level on because we're going to use the laser level to actually set final grade um, off a benchmark we have. And then we'll put a mark on this thing and then we'll go cut these things to the right height so that when we're done backfilling they'll all be at the correct height. In any case, uh, this green pipe is a 4 inch sewer pipe and it's just attached with the pre-casted in rubber grommets that are on there with a couple of hose clamps. That makes your seal and that comes across to the other tank and you'll notice that I just stepped down. So this tank is lower than that tank even though dimensionally the tanks are the same size. The outlet on that tank is higher than the inlet on this tank if they were set the same height. But because you need gravity to work you have to put this tank in the ground lower plus you want a good amount of slope so that gravity assists in getting water from or effluent from one tank to the other. This is the last tank. The pump goes in this tank. There is no precast outlet on this tank because the outlet that will go to the drain field from the pump is actually going to come out of the side of the riser. We have, an, we have a riser adapter specifically for that. So the uh, pipe comes up out of the tank and goes through the riser wall and connects to his uh, transfer pipe that goes down to his drain field. Uh, this tank only has effluent in it. This won't have any solids in it. If you get solids in this tank, you have a problem. And he's going to hold that in place until it beeps and he's going to put a mark on that thing with the Sharpie. While I put the other risers in place. So it's important that you cut these really straight. And I've never actually had to cut these before. But so we are in the house because it's easier to work in here than it is out in the mud and we did a little practice cut um, because I forgot my gauge for my circular saw. So that's fun. But these uh, these risers, these pipes actually have this little guideline on them inside. So I uh, did a practice cut up here. This is the actual cut line. Excuse me. This is the line for backfill. So we are going to actually cut one line above that so that when we backfill the lids are above grade. Beautiful. So all those are now cut to great. Um, we will put the concrete on and put the ceiling in and let them set up, which we'll do next. All right, we're going to go ahead and stick this concrete quick set around the edges of the uh, risers. Five gallon bucket and hopefully this 50 pound bag of concrete is going to mix up 
enough to do all four risers. Uh, five gallon bucket, stick, stir stick, you need a hose, and a clean area, clean off all the mud that's at least around the ceiling area of where you're at. This is the quick set concrete. This is the stuff that hardens in 15 minutes, so he's gonna have to work pretty fast. Uh, so basically, we got this bag at the local plumbing supply store. This isn't the conventional uh, stuff you would find at like Home Depot or Lowe's. So that was the first one. You saw me go around there and kind of get it pushed up against it. This isn't the sealant. This is to actually harden between the tank and the green riser so that when we backfill, it doesn't break it loose. It doesn't knock it off. The sealant that we put on the inside won't prevent that from happening. Also, if you were to bump into this with a riding lawnmower or something like that, it wouldn't break it loose, even though there'll be some dirt around it. So we're out here installing the risers and we are putting the uh, pro grade adhesive. Uh, this is the E6100. We got this at our local plumbing supply store along with the quickcrete and the riser lids. And uh, Grant, my nephew, is going to go ahead and start putting all the caulking around the inside between the precast plastic riser and the actual green riser itself. We're going to uh, use this stuff around the inside edge uh, to make a nice, good, watertight seal. And it also is adhesive, so it bonds it really nice and tight. You want to make sure you get this stuff deep down inside of there, bonding between the riser and the precasted black ring. Get that nice watertight seal so you don't get groundwater leaching back into your tank. Stop screwing around. <laughs> Come on, get this thing done. Good thing to do tonight. We are kind of jumping around, and I apologize for that. I'll do a final wrap up once everything's installed, but I wanted to show you some of the little miscellaneous things we're taking care of while we can. It is getting dark outside and we don't have lights up minus some floodlights for the 10 power. So working through what we can today. In any case, this is a pump for pumping effluent to the drain field. This is uh, specified in his sewer design by the sewer, excuse me, the septic designer. And he gives you the very specific requirements that you need that tell you what type of pump to get. Now, if you are if you have a good local plumbing supply store and you try to do this, you can take your septic design to your plumbing supply store and they will make you a parts list, which is what they did for us. And then they were able to give us a lot of this stuff. Now, he did go on to Amazon and find this pump online for cheaper. So he ordered this through Amazon. Uh, these are pretty expensive pumps. I think this one was about $300. About 300 bucks. So what he's doing right now is installing the adapter that goes from the pump outlet to the piping, which will eventually go down to his effluent uh, carry line into the drain field. Definitely using the wrong tool for the job, but we'll get there going that way. <laughs> so in any case, uh, he's installing that adapter and we will, <laughs> we will get some more of this stuff put together and get it put in the hole. I'm gonna drill a two inch hole to the side of the riser from my carry line that goes oh, to the drain field. Two and seven eighths. Perfect. And why Turns is that important? An odd size. So that is an odd size. We had to go down to two different stores to find the right hole saw. And he stuck his pump in the hole, which you can see sitting out over there. And he lined up the outlet line and he put a mark, a little gray mark. Oh God, don't drop my tank. Don't drop this in the hole. See a little gray mark right there, right in the middle of the screen? Whew. You're standing over a lot of water. I'm pretty brave putting a thousand dollar camera down there. Here he goes. Has to be perfect. No stress, no pressure. Okay, there's the outlet hole, and there is the hole saw with the little plug in it. What are you doing? 
Putting sealant in between the grommet that goes in the carry line and the tank on the riser. What are you talking about is this hole down here, which you can see we ground the ribs off of the outside of the tank so that the grommet seals correctly because the grommet has a little flange built onto it. So that hole goes through the side of the riser right here. You can see, oh, there's a tractor. So he's going to go ahead and stick that grommet in the hole. Oh. Oh yeah. All right, so we made a two inch stub that goes between our check valve and our valve for our pump. It's gonna go through the riser, so we can just put a coupling on it and connect the carry line much easier when we're done. We're gonna go ahead and install this in there, and then we're gonna put the pump in and glue this stub into the actual check valve. He's sorry, pre-primed for that. This is the wrap up for video number two. We covered the tank riser install and some more plumbing. And as you can see here, uh, we're getting ready to work on the electrical and some of the float installs. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. That always helps me out in uh, making more videos. There should be another three, maybe four videos in this video series to come. So I appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoyed.